You see, I got this problem. Cops don't like me. So I don't like cops. <laughs> Robocop was released in 1987, directed by Paul Verhoeven and starring Peter Weller, Nancy Allen, Ronnie Cox, and Kurt Woodsmith. What's going on, everyone? My name is Jason. Welcome back to the channel. You're watching Backtrack Cinema. This is where we talk movies of the past that you know and love. And it's the Alphabet Action Movie Challenge as we're pressing on with the letter R as we review Robocop. Robocop is a film that I have so many childhood memories of. Like me and my buddies would constantly put this on just to pass the time on a Friday night. So lots of great memories is hanging out with my buddies watching Robocop. We love the violence, we love the excess, we love the language, the villains. It was just such a fun flick to bond with your buddies with. <laughs> I can still remember the day my parents came home after they went for a date night to see Robocop. And when they come back, my mom was like, oh my god, that movie was so violent. And the movie does sound pretty ridiculous, Robocop. I mean, it sounds like it's just a kid's movie, right? And that was one of the problems the writers had with selling it, was that it's called Robocop, but the title stuck so much. Even Paul Verhoeven didn't want to do it. He thought it was a freaking terrible script. Paul Verhoeven's wife read it and said, I think you could do something with this. I think you should give another read and look for more of the internal work that's going on that you could really pull out of that's, that's your style. And of course, we got what we got with, you know, Paul Verhoeven style with the excess violence, you know, all these little commercials going on with it about, you know, the car commercial with bigger is better, the family playing Nukem, you know what I mean? Just a great representation of 80s America. And it is a very clever satire. It's not a political statement. It's a representation, an interpretation of 80s America with, you know, the militarization of the police the corrupt politics, the over-the-top violence, the excess, the media influence. That's all the internal work going on in it. And the external work, you know, a man who gets, he's part man, he's part machine. He goes to clean the streets up, wrapped up in a nice action sci-fi kind of blockbuster, playing into a younger teenager's fantasy with the violence and all that kind of stuff. And a guy in his suit is a cyborg who's a cop. So it all works on, on both levels. The story follows Alex Murphy, who gets brutally wounded and killed in the line of duty and comes back as a cyborg named Robocop to clean up the crime-ridden streets of Detroit City. The biggest positives for me in this was the villains, the over-the-top violence, and the very good practical effects. But the guy who steals the show completely is Kurt Wood Smith. That's Clarence Bodiger, our main bad guy. Well, Dick Jones is kind of the... The guy pulling all the strings. But for all intents and purposes, Clarence Boddicker is the guy who killed Murphy. He's our main bad guy. Kurt Woodsmith was fantastic. He never pushes it too far, and he never undersell it, undersells it either. He He's kind of perfect in this role, you know what I mean? Huh? Where's your partner? Where's your partner? He's brutal. He's vicious. But he's also throwing out all these jokes and puns while he's, like, killing Murphy. Like, all that dialogue before he kills Murphy. <laughs> Which plays right into the tone of the satire, right? This is why it all works. Like, this this villain, this character is why it all works so well. He just knew exactly how to play it. He was either really directed well, or he's just a great actor. I think a little bit of both here. And the over-the-top violence, it was jaw-dropping. There's three scenes that are etched in my mind whenever I think about this movie. When the businessman gets shot up by Ed 209, he's freaking bullish playing and blood everywhere. And, you know, there's the, this is the satire of it. The one guy, the guy's clearly dead. The guy just got probably a hundred bullet holes put him. And the guy goes, would someone call a fucking paramedic? <laughs> like, you can't help but laugh because that's how he played the tone and the satire. Man, Murphy's death is so etched in my mind, you know, in the uncut version when you see his arm get completely blown off and then they're filling holes full of him, you know, there's blood everywhere. He's just screaming in pain and there's... You know, Lewis shake it on the cage. I, it's just brutal, man. And these guys are like just having fun with this. This is like a, another day of life of crime. Like they're, they're just they're just so relishing and killing this police officer. And this little religious symbolism I really like. It's like when Lewis is down by Murphy, it's kind of like Mary at the cross. Like Murphy's just been 
crucified. He gets resurrected near the end. He's Robocop, like he's walking on water and he's like a savior of the city, so to speak. So I like what Paul Verhoeven was doing there with that kind of symbolism. The melting of Emil played by Paul McCrane, um, you know, when the toxic waste gets put on him and he's rocking around like this crazy practical effects. I remember seeing that. I remember when, and then the, the van comes and, or the car comes and he, and he just goes splatters all over everything. That was just like, oh man. Like, I think I probably had a couple of dreams of that. I, if I'm being honest, I believe Rob Bottin did all the, a lot of the effects for this and uh, quit halfway through the project and got passed off to someone else is him and him and the director who weren't seen eye to eye. There was some, there was some uh, tensions and stuff like that. So kind of interesting uh, thing about watching the behind the scenes of this. Now I love when Robocop hits the streets for the first time. I've always loved this sequence. He solves like three crimes or apprehends three guys, whatever have you. Like the first guy, you know, these rapists, he shoots the guy in the freaking balls. And then he, um, he's in the convenience store, you know, the guy's robbing the, the safe and he knocks that guy out. And then the thing he does with the next, politician where it's 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 showing that this this is a, a pure machine at this point you can't corrupt them he's running a program and you know it's it really gains the media's attention i've always loved those sequences i always thought they were great and i do like what's going on internally with murphy i like you know, he has this dream and you know there's still some of that brain tissue alive so he has these memories, but he doesn't know what he is. It's got that Frankenstein-like character. And if you guys get to know me, if you already know, I love the story of Frankenstein. This outcast who's been put together. It doesn't know how to fit into this society anymore. And that's how I've always viewed Robocop. And I've always and he's trying to put the pieces back together. He can't process anything. He's he's not exactly a monster. He's kind of like a monster, you know what I mean? But when he takes the the mask off, he sees what he is. Or what they they've put together and i've always really liked that and i really like the line he says you know i can still feel them his family but he says but i do not remember them like it's very sad actually because he has the feelings but he can't remember anything that'd be pain man it'd be a pretty awful thing so i i really like a lot of the the work they do with robocop in here now i mean i think they could have went further with robocop here with with the character work the character work could have been a lot better in this movie with our main protagonist, with RoboCop. We could have done more stuff with his family. We could have done more um, with him, his the struggle and everything like that. And this movie is too. There's so many characters who have so much disregard for human life and who, and how immoral they are. Like Dick Jones, Bob Morton, they're, they're both evil scumbags, really, who are all fighting for power of this corporation. Bob Morton, he, the guy's all about excess. He's like a rock star. Doesn't value anything unless it suits him you know what i mean just wants to get to the top of the the ladder wants the money he's got the girls he's sniffing the cocaine all about excess and everything like that so honestly i didn't give a shit when he died <laughs> and dick jones too he's you know a guy who's trying to keep his seat in power you know what i mean and do anything to do that and uh i like how they subvert expectations with these actors with ronnie cox and nancy allen who plays lewis because Nancy Allen played a lot of like bitchy characters. Like the girl she plays in Carrie is completely different than this one. And Ronnie Cox, I mean, I you see him in like Beverly Hills Cop. He's like the the nice lieutenant who does everything by the book. And, you know, he's just kind of a, a really nice guy. And this, he's this, the fucking prick, man. I like the casting. I think the casting was uh, well done. Of course, things are dated now. Like Ed 209 is pretty dated with the stop motion and everything. Um, but at the time, you know, they, they did a pretty good job for it. This was a, a, a lower budget movie, too. They didn't have the money for a lot of the stuff I'm sure they wanted to do with Ed 209. But Ed 209 always looked pretty cool. You know, he was always pretty badass. And seeing Robocop and him fight it off was pretty cool. Robocop moving slow and everything. Like that. I get you. He was in a suit. There's not much you could have done. But to, to look back at it now, I, I think Robocop moving a lot faster like he kind of does in the remake, I think is uh, something I really like to see or would have liked the scene with Robocop. But, you know, that's you, I'm, I'm very forgiving on that. Now, one thing I think I could have been done a lot better with Lewis's character. I like Lewis as a character. I like Nancy Allen in it. I think she's freaking gorgeous. I think uh, she's a badass. Like they established early that this girl can take care of herself. She wasn't utilized enough uh, and her role could have been a lot bigger. She makes the call that sends Murphy to his death, essentially. Like she makes the call to go in with no backup, 
He says, you call it. They go in. He gets killed. She would have had a lot of guilt. She would have had a lot of remorse. She would have felt awful for what happened to Murphy. And I think there could have been a lot more things going on with her. Maybe her talking to the Sarge, you know what I mean? Saying that was all my fault. I was careless. Um, this showing this kind of guilt. You could have showed scenes with her, you know, cracking down on criminals harder, like with her hate and everything like that. That would have been really cool. We could have had just more of her or a moment with his wife. There, there, there's a moment where you could have had where she tells Murphy's wife, you know, he's dead. It's kind of my fault. And I'm just letting you know what happened. And that could have been a moment where the movie could have breathed and we could have really sunk into some drama. I think anyway, I think Lewis could have been a lot more utilized in this. But I do like how she saves Robocop at the end. It's just that journey when she gets there. I think could have been more fleshed out and a lot better. And, and she was pretty shot up at the end of this, you know, that wouldn't have been a bad idea. I think if she became an, another Robocop and they were like partners, I know it, it, it sounds silly, you know, him and Lewis, you know, both Robocops, you know what I mean? But, um, she didn't seem to have anything else, no family or nothing. So I'm, I'm, or even in Robocop too, they, if they could have went, went with that route, but yeah, um, I really like Lewis as a character. This felt like she could have been utilized better. But all in all, guys, you know, I love Robocop. It's a childhood favorite. It's one of my favorite 80s films. I'm going to give Robocop from 1987 a solid B. But what about you guys? What do you think of Robocop? Is that a classic? Is it not? Let's have a healthy discussion in the comments of Robocop. And if you're new to the channel, why not subscribe to the channel? It's free. I wouldn't want you to miss on any future content, especially with the Alphabet Action Movie Challenge. And I really appreciate you all taking the time to watch this video. Go down the rabbit hole, check out the other action movies I've done for this action Alphabet Action Movie Challenge, and we'll have a good time. You'll have a great time on the channel. Lots of reviews, rankings, all that jazz. My name is Jason. I will see you on the next video. You are watching Backtrack Cinema, and I will see you in the movies. Cheers.